Thank you, all that social distancing. Look at you people all spread out six feet. That's pretty impressive. But we like it the old way, a little bit better, don't we? And we'll be back. We'll be back to that soon, I think. I really believe it. And we were uh, received by thousands and thousands of people coming in. And uh, they came in from all over. And uh, all the way from the airport to here was really something special. So it was really great. Uh, sit down. Let's have a little fun. And we'll talk. And then we'll talk about the business and the great job that you're doing. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. I'm honored. In the heart of the Lehigh Valley, now, just so you know, I have a brother who is a great brother, passed away a long time ago, Fred, and he went to Lehigh University. I've been up here many times, actually, and I gave a commencement address years ago at Lehigh University. It's a great school, but whenever I think of this area, I think about my brother. To this end, earlier today, I signed an executive order, just signed it, invoking the Defense Production Act to grant new authority to the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation. Just a little while on the plane. This federal agency normally invests in economic development projects in other countries. I said, how about investing in our country? We invest in other countries. Globalists, you know what a globalist is? They want the globe to do well, but they don't care about us. Now, we want everybody to do well, but we have to take care of America first. It's got to be America first. And you know what other countries say? Their country first. Why wouldn't they do that? But we didn't do that. We had a bunch of globalists. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. But under my order, it will now also invest in our country, helping to bring vital factories, pharmaceutical producers, and most importantly, jobs back home where they belong. Now, we had the greatest economy in the world. We had the best job numbers we've ever had. We had almost 160 million people working. We were never even close to that. The best unemployment numbers we've ever had, African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American, had the best job numbers in history, in the history of our country. They never did so well. Best income numbers, best stock market numbers, 401k numbers. The good part is the stock markets, because they know we know what we're doing, the stock market's ready to, to move. Never went down like a lot of people said, well, it's 23, 24,000. It was 29,000. It never went down like people would have assumed because they know what's happening. They know smart people, a lot of smart people. They know what's going to happen. We're going to have an amazing next year, one of our best. But we had the greatest year ever, and then we had to turn it off, artificially induced. We had to turn it off. And if we didn't do that, we would have lost 2 million people instead of whether it's 95,000, 100,000, one is too many. But we would have lost 2 million people, maybe more than that, maybe somewhat less. But think of it, even if it was a little less, multiply what we have by 20 or by 15 wouldn't be acceptable, wouldn't be sustainable. People would have said, what's going on over here? Multiply as bad as you've seen it. And, you know, you can say what you want about the flu, but I've never lost anybody to the flu that I knew. I mean, I've had people, friends, they have the flu and they're sick, they don't feel good. And you call up, how you doing? You know, three days, two days, a week later, they're fine. Nobody ever said they died. But I've lost five people that I know. Two people were very good friends of mine. And you call up two days later, how are they doing? Sir, they're in a coma. I said, they're in a coma. Now, they were older. I wouldn't say they were in the greatest of health. I wouldn't say their weight was perfect. Not perfect. But uh, they're gone. So it's just a terrible, terrible thing. In my administration, we believe in two beautiful rules, buy American and hire American. This afternoon, I also have great news on testing. You know, we've been doing testing at a level that nobody's ever done it before. We cannot get any, and we cannot get the press to write about it or write fairly about it. And nobody has ever done. We've done double what anyone else. If you add up all of the countries in the world, we've done more testing than all of the countries in the world added up together. Nobody's ever done anything like that. And we have the best tests. We have tested two months ago, didn't even exist. 
or great companies came up with things, uh, Abbott Laboratories and so many others. They came up with things at Roche. They came up with things that nobody even believes. So we have the best testing in the world. It could be the testings, frankly, uh, overrated. Maybe it is overrated. But whatever they start yelling, we want more, we want more. You know, they always say, we want more, we want more, because they don't want to give you credit. Then we do more, and they say, we want more. But we have the greatest testing in the world. But what we want is we want to get rid of this thing. That's what we want. We want to get rid of this thing. This afternoon, I also have great news on that testing. America has now conducted its 10 millionth test. That's as of yesterday afternoon. 10 million tests we gave. 10 million. And CVS has just committed to establish up to 1,000 new coronavirus testing sites by the end of this month. And uh, the 10 millionth will go up very, very rapidly. And don't forget, we have more cases than anybody in the world. But why? Because we do more testing. When you test, you have a case. When you test, you find something is wrong with people. If we didn't do any testing, we would have very few cases. They don't want to write that. It's common sense. So we test much more, many, many times. South Korea, you hear about? I spoke with the President of South Korea. I spoke with many different presidents, prime ministers. Uh, they can't believe what we've been able to do on testing. They can't believe what we've been able to do on ventilators. We're sending them ventilators. Other countries, Italy, Spain, uh, other countries, France is having tremendous problems, tremendous problems. We're helping them with ventilators. They can't believe the job we're doing. And it's not me, it's, it's the people, all of these people, but it's the people that are doing it, and they have to be given the proper credit for what they've done, because what they did is a miracle. No other country in the world has done what we've done. And they feel very free now to call us because they need help, especially with the ventilators, because that's hard. That's not a cotton swab. That's a very hard thing, very, very hard thing to produce. Joining us today are a few of the workers who have kept our hospitals supplied through this crisis and take part in a great, great rebuilding that's going forward. I say it's the transition to greatness. The transition is the third quarter. The fourth quarter is going to do very well. And next year is going to be through the roof. We have to get your governor of Pennsylvania to start opening up a little bit. You have areas of Pennsylvania that are barely affected, and they have — they want to keep them closed. Can't do that. But you'll be uh, — we're going to be bigger and better than ever. We've learned a lot. We've also learned not to rely on others so much. Let's do it ourselves. Let's build it ourselves. Let's make it ourselves. But you're going to be a nation of manufacturers, and Pennsylvania workers will once again — you're going to lead the way. With your help, we will vanquish the virus. We're going to vanquish the plague. I call it the plague, because that's what it is. We'll get our nation back to work, and we will build our glorious future with American hands, and American grit, and American pride. You have heart. I want to thank you to everyone at Owens and Minor. I want to thank you for this great area of the world. As I told you, I think of Fred. Fred, my brother Fred. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.